Uh, welcome to this session. Uh, we all know that uh, in our day-to-day -day experiences, we get a lot of learning in our life. And as an individual, we strive to contribute meaningfully to the society so that our society develops meaningfully. During this process, education plays a very important role. Education not only directs our action, but it molds our uh, personality as well. So therefore, it is very, very important that an individual receives a good quality education. But when we talk about education, there are certain terms which are often being used, sometimes interchangeably and sometimes there is a lot of misconceptions. Terms like schooling, learning, training and instructions, these are the terms which are often being used. Uh, during our discussion today, we are going to discuss about these terms and we will try to get distinction and uh, an understanding about these terms. So this session today has these following objectives. That is to explain the meaning of various terms such as education, schooling, learning and training. And apart from that, we will try to understand the differences between these terms. Uh, so, let us go on the first term, when we talk about education, then by education, what does that word education, what does it, what does uh, come to your mind when we talk about education? See, uh, education is a process which basically helps in development and also development is also dependent on education. So, where do we get education from? We get education from everywhere in our daily experiences whenever you are going to a school or an uh, whenever you are going to buy any kind of item from the market you get some kind of learning so that is also education so therefore education can be uh, received from uh, anybody and it is it can be formal as well as it can be informal but when we talk about education there is one thing which comes to an, to our mind that is, is education uh, only leads to, uh, you know, development of our uh, development of our, our physical aspect or our cognitive ability. So, what education is? Let me uh, refer here a very prominent definition given by um, Mahatma Gandhi. That is, education draws out the best of the individual and the child in terms of the body, mind and soul. So hence you can say that education is just not about um, developing the cognitive ability of the individual but it is also about developing the skills, the ability and uh, even the knowledge in a particular individual. So therefore education leads to the uh, development of the all round development, all round development of uh, of an individual which which involves the improvement in terms of cognitive ability that is the mental ability even the skills and even how an individual you know interacts with the other individual that is the affective domain so you can say education means the all round development of mind body and soul that is hand head and heart so it is not just limited to the development of our cognitive abilities. Now, when the term education comes, there is another term which comes simultaneously in our mind that is schooling. Let's, let us try and understand what schooling is. So when you talk about schooling, schooling is something which you receive in a formal institution that is in a particular school or an educational institution. So schooling is very specific and it is time bound, right? Whereas education is not time bound, it is a dynamic process. So if you look at the definition, then you would see education is a dynamic process. It keeps on happening every time. And schooling is not that dynamic because why it is not dynamic? because it is dependent upon the curricular inputs which we which has to be given to an individual so that dynamism is limited because of the curricular inputs and the framework which we have according to a, according to which a teacher need to work another point is when you talk about education education starts from uh, right from the birth 
and even before the birth when the child is there in the womb we say education starts from womb and it goes to the tomb that means this is a continuous process it's a lifelong process so you tend to get educated you tend to get uh, all kind of education throughout the life so it is a continuous process whereas if you go back and reflect upon your schooling you would find that you were there in a school for say 12 years there were 12 years of formal schooling so there is a specific time frame right so which is not in the case of education so it is not very limited so in that sense education has a much broader perspective which schooling doesn't have it is very specific in terms of time and also in terms of learning experiences so when i say it is limited in terms of learning experiences i am not saying that these learning experiences should not be provided uh, to an individual or should be limited here what i mean is these learning experiences must be at uh, must be at the level of the student say a uh, the uh, uh, a student from class 2 if you compare a student from class 2 with a, a student of class 8 you cannot provide similar learning experiences to an individual because it will depend upon the age of the child it will depend of the content to be covered in that particular class and it will depend upon the nature of teaching method which you will adopt for that particular uh, age group so therefore it is very specific and the learning experiences also which we give to a child of say class 2 or class 8 or or to or for that matter any other class it's very limited therefore the curriculum for class 2 because that is because the curriculum for class 2 is different from class 8 so therefore it is very specific in terms of providing learning experiences when you talk about education education is more flexible since it is broad so it is more flexible but when you talk about school it is fixed in terms of time and duration for example you have a particular academic year in which you have to complete a particular class and a particular curriculum so it cannot uh, you know it cannot flow to the next class in a sense you have to finish your x class to be promoted to a next class so therefore it is fixed in that terms so therefore if you look at both the terms the educational the experiences that is the difference which provides to both education and schooling now if you let me more go more detail about what in uh, what what should be the nature of schooling which should be provided in our school see when you talk about uh, uh, learning which happens in the school it is more of a didactical process it is not that you will port something into the mind of the child the child has to be also a continuous learner so for the knowledge creation in in school uh, it has to be a mutual process you have to actively involve your students in order to make it more meaningful so any learning will become meaningful in school when the students are actively involved and for that they have to be a mute they have to be an equal uh, equal participant in learning and they have to contribute uh, the they meaning the student and the teacher have to contribute mutually to develop the a particular content of knowledge so that is what when we talk about education and schooling if we move on to another terms like training what does the word training means when you talk about i have already discussed about it so when you talk about training training means a short term task oriented and targeted action on achieving a change in the attitudes skill and knowledge in a particular job area so it is usually related to a job right but it is task oriented and it is skill oriented so when we are providing uh, training to a particular individual so it is related to you know sharpening the skills of the individual in a particular uh particular or specific job area for example say if you want to develop a powerpoint so you will be given training to develop an effective powerpoint so a skill of developing a effect an effective powerpoint will be you know uh, 
taught to you in such a manner that you are able to achieve that particular objective so hence if you talk about training then the goal of the training is is to develop the skill in a particular individual that could be any kind of a skill and simultaneously the ability so both ability and skill amounts to a uh, the process of training whenever you talk about developing a skill you have to provide them a very very specific uh, input in terms of training because you have in uh, while while providing the training to an individual specific target needs of the individual have to be identified which are specific to that and those target needs will be derived from the skills to be taught or skills to be developed in a particular individual for example if you want to develop a skill in an individual to say prepare a powerpoint it will be different from a skill to uh, develop a effective say uh, letter writing skill right so they do those two the objectives of both both the trainings are very different so we have to try to assess the training needs of the individuals what exactly you want to teach so that the the ability in that particular skill can be achieved in a particular individual so this is what when we talk about training so the training will be equivalent to development of skill whereas the another term when you talk about learning learning uh, wherever you go we learn something or the other isn't it so it is relatively when you talk about learning so it is nothing but a relatively permanent change in the behavior of an individual which is a result of experience practice or training say for example you taught a particular skill to an individual so the an individual learned that particular skill so that change which has happened in the behavior of the individual that is called learning so the any change which comes it is it is observable you can observe the changes which is brought about by the process of learning for example you will be able to see that now the the particular individual is able to make effective powerpoints so these of these changes are observable and generally whatever changes if we talk about uh, learning in the classrooms then this learning is dependent on many many factors for example the age of the learner the method of teaching even the teaching style the teacher adopts and also the teaching aids which you use so any change which is brought about in the classroom right it is dependent on these factors so as a teacher also it is very important that we keep all these factors in mind while we plan any kind of learning for our learner also since this learning as i said is observable so and since it is observable hence it is measurable also so any learning which happens can be tested whether how much the student has learned and again this learning it is not only at one level it is it 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 is from the level from it is from the basic level it starts from the basic level that is from knowledge and it goes up to application so we as a teacher we have to we have to try that this particular organization of learning must take place in such a manner that the student is able to achieve the highest objectives of learning so this is what learning is that is permanent change in the behavior so the next term which often comes to our mind is again learning and training right we we have discussed about learning and we have discussed about training let us just uh, now see how different are they and on in on which dimensions are they different if you talk about learning then the in focus the learning is on learner and in training the focus is on trainer that is the teacher so the teacher has to impart a particular skill to an individual right but in the process of learning it is a mutual process wherein the learner become the active participant in learning so you can give a cue to a learner and learner can read on and learn on and increase her knowledge but in training uh, since it requires the development of a specific skill so the here the role of a trainer or a teacher becomes uh, takes a center stage 
Next thing is that when you talk about uh, in the process of learning, the teacher acts as a facilitator, whereas in the process of training, the teacher acts as an expert. Because again, skills required uh, requires a specific input to be given. So it has to be given by a particular expert who has that particular skills in them. For example, if you want to develop uh, again a skill in say using the computer effectively, then you will need a person who has that particular skill, isn't it? Here again, the role of the trainer becomes very important. And when you talk about in terms of learner, and then in the process of learning, it is more active, it is more mutual. The learner also provides much of the input. But when you talk about skill development, since it is more teacher centered, trainer focused, so the role of the learner, it is little passive in comparison to the process of learning. Again, when you talk about assessment of learning, as I, tell, as I have told you that during the learning, a perm relatively permanent change comes in an individual which is observable. So it can be customized as per the age level of the students because uh, in that process the inputs which are given to the learner are dependent upon the learner's characteristics. Wherein, whereas when we talk about uh, in, the, in, in the process of training, it is more standardized because we know a specific skill. So we know a person has learned a particular skill when that person has achieved a particular skill set. So it is more standardized. So it cannot be customized as per the learner need. It, it will be standardized as per the demands of that particular skill and or the industry. Uh, and learning is more long term. Learning keeps happening as in same is as a process of education, which is a continuous process. Similar in that term, learning is also a continuous process. So it's a long term process. Where, whereas when you talk about training, it is more short term, right? Because it is depend, it is it is focusing on the uh, the skills or the sets of skills which is to be developed in an individual. So therefore, the pursuit of learning and knowledge and is knowledge and for that of skill skill is a pursuit for training so that is the main difference so overall if you look at it learning is a again a long term lifelong process in which a learner plays an active role whereas it's training it is a short term process where a trainer plays an active role so that is the main difference between learning and training. Now let us come to another aspect that is teaching and instruction. This is another very, very important, uh, uh, you know, uh, concept which, which we often hear about and which we often get confused with that what is teaching and what is instruction. Uh, as a teacher, uh, we all focus on the overall development of the individual. That means teaching is just not focused on a developing the cognitive aspect of the learner. Teaching is derived from uh, the definition of education that is the all round development of the individual. So there were, where, wherever a teacher is there in the class, uh, the teacher tries to focus on achieving the overall development of the individual and in all the domains of learning that is cognitive, affective and psychomotor. So when you talk about teaching, it is just not providing a limited experience to the learner. It is an experience which is given to a learner so that a particular learner is able to achieve all the learning goals in the all the domains of learning. So therefore, teaching aims at the overall development of an individual. Whereas in instruction, instruction is based on skill development. So if you go back to the previous distinctions which we made about learning and training, wherein we talked about in training, it is more focusing on skill development. So it, while we provide training to the individual, we provide instructions because the aim of instruction is only skill development. 
So while we are giving instruction, what we are doing, we are only telling uh, the individual how something is done. We are just telling how something is done, whereas in contrast to instruction, in the process of teaching, we explain how something is done. Right? So there is a difference between telling and explaining. So here during the instruction, what a instructor do is that a instructor instructs the steps to be followed to achieve a particular goal. For example, in school laboratories, when the students are expected to conduct a particular experiment. Now what does a teacher do? A teacher spells out a particular steps in order and she expects the students to follow the, those particular steps in order to conduct that particular experiment effectively. So only the steps to be followed take her uh, whereas in teaching they are not they are just not it is just not merely telling of the facts since in teaching uh, it involves the uh, learner as well. So first in teaching any effective teacher would want that a te teaching also should become a mutual process of learning and teacher would try to explain how and why the things happen right. So say for example in a chemistry class if a chemical reaction is explained right how uh, uh, if we uh, combine one compound with the other compound, what will happen when they react together and what reactant will it produce that is teaching. So here the teacher will explain the nature of the compound, teacher will explain that how the two compounds have interacted and formed a reactant, a final compound. Right, And she will also focus on why it has happened, how the nature of a compound has impacted a particular reaction to happen. So here the explanation is happening about the process and also why that particular thing has happened. Whereas now if you shift this particular part to a laboratory, there a same science teacher will give two compounds to uh, the students and will ask them to mix the two compounds and see what happens whether the color changes or whether there is a precipitant which is formed. So there the students are going to apply their knowledge to in the laboratory that is a different part but how the particular content is delivered that makes a difference. Here in instruction only a step by step instruction or a process is given to an individual. So there the student need not to even think beyond. So it is a very very structured approach of you know uh, giving a particular content to a learner whereas in teaching it is not that structured. The, there there is a lot of scope of inquiring, even asking or even changing the way we are teaching whereas in instruction it is not there. So therefore in instruction during the process of instruction, the objective is uh, to achieve a particular skill, say how to hold a particular test tube so that the chemical does not flow out of it and the student does not harm herself, right. So that is a skill a student need to learn which can be only uh, done through instruction. They, the teacher will tell that you have to hold the test tube in, in your hand so that it, it is straight and the liquid from the test tube does not fall out. So it is very specific and crisp when you talk about in terms of instruction. Now if you, if you uh, try and gauge the role of the learner in the process of teaching and instruction then you will find any good teacher will try that the learn the teaching which is happening it is more mutual so it will be dependent more on the learn more on the learner so in the entire teaching process the focus is on the learner that what has to be taught to the learner how it has to be taught to the learner and why it has to be taught to the learner and how a teacher can include the learners in the process of teaching whereas whereas in the process of instruction this learning is totally 
you know uh, dependent on the on the learner right so uh, in the process of instruction it is important that the students they become dependent on the instructor on a particular instruction to be given to them whereas during the process of teaching it is not important uh, uh, that a teach, learner may is expected to follow what what, what a teacher is saying is correct a, te a learner may also add during the process of uh, teaching right so therefore the overall when you talk about teaching it will help in developing critical thinking amongst the uh, learners whereas in the in process of instruction only the functional thinking is developed how a particular skill can be operated so only the functional aspect of the of that particular thinking is being taken care of when you talk about instruction so therefore now if you try and correlate many terms which has been discussed like education learning teaching whereas in the opposite side say for example training and instruction so you can draw out that training and instruction they are little related because in training also the objective is to develop a particular skill set through providing a particular instruction that is telling them how to do whereas in learning is nothing but a relatively permanent change in the behavior which can happen also through a, an effective teaching so these two terms are also related to each other so we have to go back and forth when we try and understand these terms and also simultaneously we have to make a contrast between these two terms teaching and instruction learning and training and education and schooling in order to understand the meaning of each one of them but you can also derive from all the discussion that any learning which takes place is nothing but a combination of an effective teaching and also effective instruction and also training so the overall uh, change which comes it happens because of these effective training teaching and instruction which is provided to the learner so therefore the overall achievement in terms of you know uh, education if you say or overall achievement in terms of uh, learning if you say is dependent upon these three aspects as well but all these three aspects have specific uh, contribution to make in an individual so uh, therefore we have to make distinctions between these two between these three terms simultaneously we have to also see the uh, you know effect of various term, various processes which uh, upon each other so in order to understand this we have to uh, do simultaneously making distinction as well as draw out the similarities and finding out how they are dependent with each other. With this, I end this. Thank you so much.